guys, it's Geraldine Ralph. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I have an early childhood program in my home where I care for up to 12 little ones under the age of five and I create content to help you run an amazing early childhood program in your home. So today I am going to be talking to you a little bit about communication styles and what we do to help our children work on speech, language, and communication. We recently had a whole new group of kids coming into our program and we have some of these kids that, that are coming into our program are coming in part-time and um, parents are telling us that they have been quarantining a lot during quarantine so these children do not have as much access to early childhood programs. They, some of them have been in, not been in child care at all. Other children um, have been in part-time care and it's just been stressful and chaotic and challenging for their families um, and so they're coming to a smaller group like our to be able to get a little bit more support. And um, what I'm noticing with a lot of the kids that are coming into our program right now is we have about five of them that have some speech and language um, deficiencies that I've noticed. I am not a speech pathologist. I do not uh, diagnose anything, but I just noticed like some of the speech and language issues from the children that are coming in, I believe are due to the fact that some of our children haven't either had access to friends or um, other early childhood experiences where they're with uh, professionals who are working with them on basic communication skills, or um, just some of the kids might've already had like some sort of articulation situation going on. Uh, whatever the case, we've got about five kids in our classroom that we are working on basic um, communication skills with them. So I wanted to create this video with permission from my families, of course, about some of the techniques that we are using in our classroom in order to be able to support the children that are in our care. Of course, uh, again, I don't diagnose anybody. I'm not a, spot, a speech pathologist for the children who I have noticed um, could use a little extra support. We've talked to parents about that, where they can get support. We're in Michigan, so there's early on. It's a great program for families. Um, but in the meantime, we are also creating a curriculum that helps them work on those basic communication skills so that they can be successful and have fun at school. And we can create um, some teaching resources for families so that they can follow up at home to support their child. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is um, basic sign language. In our classroom, we have children that are from one to age four or five. Uh, so we use basic sign language with our youngest students. We never know what's, you know, where they're at with the communication when we first get children in our classroom. And we want them to be able to communicate basic things with us and also to build a relationship. It's so important for children to have a relationship with our primary caregiver. And it's so important to have continuity of care in the classroom so that they want to engage with us and they want to feel um, like they can communicate with us and get to that feedback. So the first thing that we teach our newest children that are the youngest children that aren't already talking are some basic signs. And I have a video clip of one of my little guys who just started with us. Mom and dad have been working with him on speech at home. And we are also working with, or I have been working with him on sign language at home. And so we are also working on signs here in our classroom. So the first thing that I think is really important for people to know is that it's really important to develop a familiar routine with the children and also um, to, to teach signs based on what they're interested in. Um, and again, we're very basic with our sign language. We do like eat, we do please, we do thank you, we do come here, um, we do all done. So very basic, simple signs um, that just help them understand like our basic routines. Um, and then of course, we're, we're always communicating with the children and encouraging them to uh, have good eye contact with us and also, you know, to tap us on the shoulder, take us by the hand. And we're always very receptive to any kinds of communication that the children that are starting out our program um, offer us. We also have a really, um, like every morning we do a morning song. So for the children who are less communicative, I really make sure to sit down with them and do a simple like a peekaboo game and we'll do our morning song and I bounce them around on my lap and get them clapping and get them really excited about uh, making that connection with me and communicating with me uh, as the primary in the classroom. We also have support staff. We have, I have two other assistants in the morning, again, because we had so many kids that were having 
speech and language issues, we decided to bring an extra teacher in and she is doing, we have two extra teachers. Well, okay, we're, we're licensed for 12. So anytime I have more than six, I have to have one extra teacher, but we wanted to bring a second extra teacher in so that she can really work on helping the children with those basic communication skills. So I have a video, a few video clips here that I will share with you that just kind of show you the things that we're doing. Um, one of our little guys, we're working on the sign language. So he is very interested in getting into, anytime we put food out on the counter, he's over there trying to, you know, grab a snack. Um, he comes to us two days a week. So he still doesn't really quite understand that you can't just help yourself to anything. I'm sure at home you can. But here at school, we have different rules. Uh, traditionally, I would redirect that by showing them some other toys to work on. But in this case, I really want to work on him with basic signs. The, the one sign that we really want to work on with him is eat. And, um, you know, that's something that he's interested in. So when he goes over to the counter and he tries to help himself to a snack, I keep a couple extra snacks up there. And then I hold the snack by my face so that he's looking at my face and he knows to look at my face and pay attention to me and the food because that's what he's interested in. So now I'll hold it here and I'll just say eat. And, um, and I've worked with him on that a few times. We're working on that sign and just showing him exactly what it is. And as soon as he makes any attempt, like sometimes he'll put his face around or his hands around his face. Actually, in the beginning, I was noticing he was putting his hands on his head or on his chest. Um, and I don't, I didn't know if that was like his approximation of the sign or, um, if he was just, you know, trying to communicate. So I just sh was showing him the food and then teaching him eat and then handing him a treat as soon as he's done saying eat. So we're going to keep some snacks up there. And again, it's going to be a really good way for him to just initiate an interaction with us. And, um, then every time he goes to the counter, then he knows he's going to get a treat and he's going to get to say eat. So that's one thing that we're working on. Um, we're also working on smaller groups, creating smaller groups for our kids. I usually will have like two kids or three kids. Some of my children are overwhelmed at having like too many kids in their space. So we're, we're having some, uh, issues with sharing and turn taking and all of that because we have so many children that are coming in that haven't been around other children so they don't really understand how to take turns and they don't understand about sharing space so we're just taking them in smaller groups and we'll have one teacher working with two or three kids at a time and then that way we can do a lot of social coaching and building relationships with the children so if one child gets in another child's space um, then we just, you know, if we have two children who kind of seem to butt heads, then we'll just split them up and put them in different groups. And then when we're all together in a group, we reinforce all of the positive social behaviors that we've been working on with them uh, in the smaller groups, if that makes sense. <laughs> so we've been working on that. We also have uh, our new teacher, Miss Sitlati. She's been working on reading books on repeat. So if you work with toddlers and preschoolers and you know that they have their favorite storybooks and we right now we have a few on our wall back there and we're keeping the same stories so that we can work on um, the children who have very limited communication skills. When they hear the same stories over and over again, they get excited because it makes them feel like part of the group. So they all want to come together. They all want to hear the stories. Um, we also use a lot of stories where the children are moving. So the one behind me um, from head to toe is a really uh, good one. The kids are, you know, they're, act they're doing like animal antics. So we um, encourage them to think of other things that animals might do or to, you know, like there's a gorilla. They really love beating on their chest and being the gorilla. They love to get kind of crazy and do that one. So it's really a really good way for them to build that community and communication with their peers. And every time that we pull that book out, there's going to be, they know there's going to be something fun and exciting for them. We also have Going on a bear hunt, that's a really big one. And we had one other one that the kids are really into. I can't remember it. We have a few other songs and finger plays that we do on repeat though. So it's really nice to have our third teacher because she can pull a small group of kids out together and they can work on those kinds of skills. They're working on like uh, labeling simple pictures and storybooks that are familiar to them, um, repeating and reciting familiar songs and finger plays 
and just working on building that sense of community among the children. So I'm gonna put a clip together here for you so that you can see some of the things that we're doing. You can see it in action and how we're doing it. And I would love to hear from you if there are any, if you have a little toddler that you love or preschooler and they're struggling with their speech and language, what are you guys doing or to, um, to help support them? And what can we do to help support you support them. <laughs> Anyways, I just want to say thanks for stopping by. Make sure to leave a comment below. We would love to hear about your classroom. Have a fabulous day.